insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 81 Walking Dead or Dead Man Walking. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my informed and knowledgeable co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, sweetheart? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing all right. So, uh, got a busy show today. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of stories to go over today. Yep. So, in today's show, we're going to talk in our Disney Detective about Disney World and Rivals shifting to survival mode. And an old favorite Hollywood Studios uh, attraction may be gone for good. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, Obi-Wan Kenobi star Ewan, Ewan, is it Ewan or Ewan? How do you pronounce his first name? Ewan. Ewan. Ewan McGregor. <laughs> You're asking me. Yeah, I The know. woman who butchers everybody's name. Yeah, I guess I really should go to a different source there. The guy that plays Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right. Him. <laughs> Ewan. Um, uh, on the legacy of the prequels uh, and excitement for the Disney Plus series that's coming out soon. And Daisy Ridley talks about how they were toying around with Ray being someone else's granddaughter. Now, that one I had read about before the movie uh, Rise of Skywalker came out. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting that there is some credence to it. Mm -hmm. In our entertainment news, we'll talk about New York Comic Con. And their spotlight on Doctor Who, and plus a f uh, first look at a new series, The Watch, and Walking Dead coming to an end, but not really. Right. So we'll get to all that, plus our insightful picks in a little bit. Uh, before then, I would say, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm having <laughs> a hard time this morning. <laughs> Too early in the morning for a podcast. Dude. For you. <laughs> um, so I would encourage folks to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can subscribe to our video version of the podcast at Insights. Uh, it is Insights into Things. The audio version of the podcast is Insights into Entertainment. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and now Amazon. You can get us on your Echo device. Wow. Everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, we are literally everywhere if you search us on the web now, so I'm very impressed with my search engine optimization techniques. Wow, you're <clears> awesome. Not to pat myself on the back too hard, though. Thanks. <laughs> uh, we also would encourage you to reach out to us, give us your feedback, tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what you'd like us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can catch our high-res videos. On YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream six days a week this week, seven days a week. Uh, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Uh, just a side note, if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a Prime subscription, a Twitch Prime subscription for free with your membership. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it if you click that subscribe button on Twitch for us. That helps us out tremendously. You can also get audio versions of the podcast at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or you can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insightsintothingspodcast or links to all of those and all of our social media, although we do have to get our Instagram one up. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's insights into things. Pod. No, I think it's just insights into things. I'm not sure. We need to know. confirm that. Yeah. We would want to get the wrong information. <laughs> We're on Instagram now, too. 
But anyway, <laughs> you get all of those at our website at insightsintothings.com. God, there's one place that has everything. Exactly. That's, that's <laughs> what that whole website's for. Uh, so we'll be right back and we'll get right into the show. Go for Disney Detective. So uh, the one article uh, talked about uh, Disney World and its rivals kind of switching into survival mode. Uh, this came from uh, Fool.com, which uh, is mostly an investment. Uh, Motley Fool. Motley Fool, but it's Fool.com is the the website. Yeah. Um, so they were talking about how, you know, the central Florida theme parks are now starting to hunker down again because they had a very good Labor Day uh, weekend. Actually, I believe uh, Universal uh, actually ended up getting to their capacity level and had to stop letting guests in um, because they were doing so well. And I know there were other articles floating around talking about how um, some of the rides at Universal, they weren't adhering to the social distancing, that they were kind of packing more people on certain rides because they had such long wait times. Um, but in this article, they were talking about how now that, you know, the summer season is over, now you're going to see more limits on park hours for all of the uh, for all of the, the parks in the area. Um, and that Universal actually temporarily closed two of its hotels and six of its least popular attractions ahead of the slowdown of the season. Um, it even talked about how SeaWorld, who they were offering longer hours and they were actually offering, uh, fireworks. Now they've started to cut back. Um, as well. The other thing that's hurting um, all of these parks now is that nobody is doing the Halloween parties. And that is usually a very big ticket item for Universal and for Disney. And obviously, they made the decision to not host these parties this year. So that's kind of, you know, going to hurt them. But the other thing, too, is that with Disney and with Universal, they also have as you know, part of their company, they have a media uh, division that they fall back on. So obviously, they're not hurting as much as, say, SeaWorld, because SeaWorld doesn't have anything else besides their parks, really, at, at this point. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens. Um, the one good thing is that even though Central Florida has been a hotspot for um COVID positive individuals, they have realized that since the park has opened or all of these parks have opened, that there haven't been any um, positive COVID cases from anybody visiting the park. So that's kind of good news to hear that since, again, the parks have been open, nobody's test tested positive from being at the park. So that that's kind of a positive, you know, w with the parks being open. Um, obviously, the parks aren't going away anytime soon. It's just going to take a little while, um, you know, for, for things to, to open back up, obviously. But the other thing, too, is that now the summer season is over, so the park usually is at a lull anyway. What was interesting was not in this article, but there was a, a separate article that came out about uh, one of the resorts in Walt Disney World, uh, the Four Seasons, was actually offering <laughs> staycation um, <clears throat> vacation packages because they know so many kids are doing homeschooling or remote learning. So many parents are doing remote learning. So they kind of offered this vacation packages. Well, you know, work during the day and, and come play at night. So um, what was funny was with the four seasons, they were actually offering like a tutoring service. So for, I believe it was $50 for a half a day and a hundred dollars for the full day, you could have your child go to school 
and they were using um, their ballrooms. They were setting them up and social distancing tables with Wi-Fi available, and they'd have people there on staff to help with your children to, you know, connect to their school if they had any questions with homework. And then, you know, parents can work, you know, in their, their hotel rooms without any distraction. And then once your school day is over, you can, you know, you're minutes away from, you know, the theme parks. So that, that I thought was kind of funny. And I actually, there's a Facebook friend of mine who she's actually, she's not going there, but she decided, you know what? We're homeschooling for, you know, for, for a month and I'm working from home. Might as well go someplace and, and make it more enjoyable than being stuck in our kitchen. So interesting. Yeah. So I'm assuming with these reduced hours, um, they're not lowering prices anywhere. Nope. Of course not. Which is, you know, that's kind of one of the sticking points that I have. Mm -hmm. You're already offering a diminished service. Now you're offering diminished hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the thought that Disney is, is switching to survival mode is almost laughable Mm. considering the entire, you know, you could have absolutely nobody show up at the parks for like years. Right. And they'd still turn a profit. Mm-hmm. And so. and I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of discount out there for Florida residents, because that we don't always hear about in the national news. If you, you know, if you're in that area, there's usually always something going on. So I'm sure for anybody in the Orlando area, there's probably some sort of discounts yeah. going on, you know, to to attract people to to come to the parks. So, what's our official family standpoint on going to Disney? Is it still uh, off limits at this point in time, or what? I don't know. I'm I'm like, I think our biggest thing is how to get there. That's really the you know if there was a without having to fly without having to drive if we were closer plus the other thing too is that this you know we're in new jersey fortunately we're in an area right now that has very low rates or you know we're we're not spiking too much of infection rates you mean of infection rates <laughs> um but uh, you know, I've had a couple of different doctor appointments that, you know, were makeup appointments from months ago. And the first question they ask is, have you left the Delaware area, you know, within, you know, the last two weeks? And I know as soon as we get out of our nice little cushion, that's when we have to quarantine for, you know, the the two weeks and 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 everything. And it's like... Is it worth it? You know, like I kind of I kind of go back and forth. It's like there's that you don't want to live in fear, but you don't want to die, you know, and we don't know if any of us got it, how it would affect us. And it's like, do you want to take that risk just to see something different? No, you're right. You're right. It's a it's a risk reward evaluation you have to make, and the risk itself is statistically small, mm-hmm. but the potential downfall to it is mm-hmm. astronomical. Right. So, so we'll hold off. It is good news to see that the people that have been going down there have not been getting right, infected. and and that's I think one of the things that we kind of talked about when the parks were opening is let's let's see how everybody's making it out there let's see if and and that's the thing is you hear disney doing really well with the guests being socially distant you hear some of the other parks with it not going so well so it would be nice if everybody was following the rules all yeah. over the place well and i think i think we stick to the plan we take the rest of the year off and we see where things are mm-hmm. after the first of the year Mm-hmm. You know, we might have a vaccine. We might have better numbers by then. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Wait yeah. and see. We'll take the rest of the year off. Absolutely. So tell us what attraction we might be losing at Hollywood Studios. So this uh, article came from KennyThePirate.com. And obviously there were lots of changes when the parks opened. There were um, things that 
Obviously, as we mentioned, the park isn't at full capacity. Not every ride or attraction is open. Um, and one of the big things that, you know, most people have noticed is that because of the battle that's going back and forth with the Actors Equity Association and Disney, a lot of the performers have not been called back to work. So a lot of the, the different stage shows haven't been going on because of this. Um, but they have started to do a couple of different uh, things with characters um, and some of the shows. But things like the Beauty and the Beast uh, live stage show have been temporary temporarily replaced with other um, entertainment. But the one thing that uh, people were starting to notice was the attraction, um, the Voyage of the Little Mermaid didn't open when the park opened. And if you walk by the area around uh, the attraction, there's no markings for social distancing. So what they did with almost every other attraction is they have markings clearly defined so that when they, you know, certain attractions opened up, they'd already be marked up. But for The Little Mermaid, there's no markings. And the other thing that was noticed was that there's a show billboard that was on the side of the theater, and that has now been removed, and there's nothing there in its place. So the speculation is, is this now gone forever? Now, The Voyage of the Little Mermaid is mostly a puppet show um, with some live actors as well. Um, nice little 17 minute show that's inside in air conditioning, um, you know, that tells the quick version of the Little Mermaid uh, movie. And if you look at, you know, there were pictures of the, the park map and there's nothing listed for it, not even something saying temporarily closed. It's just it's just vanished from from the map. And again, nothing for the markings for when it could reopen. So is, you know, so is this part of the actor dispute or is it something where they've just figured, all right, time to regroup and we'll worry about it, you know, another time. So, well, and because of the close proximity of the actors and the, mm -hmm. and the puppeteers, it may be that, you know, this just isn't a viable show to continue at this right. point. Yeah. Could be. So I've only think, I think I've only seen it once myself. Is it something that you and Maddie uh, sit in on a lot? Mm, not a lot, but we've sat on it a couple of times, maybe two or three, you know, yeah, shame to lose another good air conditioning. Spot down <laughs> exactly. There. That's why I pointed it out. <laughs> Uh, hopefully they bring it back with another air conditioned spot. Right, but, right. You know, shelters like that are difficult under these conditions. Well, and actually that's one of the things that they've been doing a lot more of is they have throughout the park these comfort zones where you can go sit in air conditioning and take your mask off. And they have tables, you know, spread out with, with chairs so people can go sit and relax. So I'm surprised they're not using it as, you know, I guess it's kind of harder with a theater because you have the, the rows of seat unless you, you know, mark off and then, you know, how do you get past people without, you know, getting close Start to them. Start removing seats. They mm -hmm. could do that too. Do so a checker box pattern yeah, of seats. Yeah, true, there. true. So... Anyway, I guess we'll see what uh, what happens with that moving mm -hmm. forward. Maybe they'll bring something else in instead. Yeah, yeah. So that was all we had for Disney Detective. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in a minute with uh, Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. 
visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Disney Detective, and I don't have a sound effect for you because I didn't switch the soundboard over, so sorry. No, no, not even Disney Detective. Wow, I'm really losing it today. No more early podcast. <laughs> Go for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. <laughs> pew, pew. Tell us about Obi-Wan. <laughs> So Obi-Wan Kenobi is shaping up to be a, a pretty interesting series so far. Um, in a recent interview, Ewan McGregor agreed that the show has been a long time coming. The last time that he had actually played the Jedi Master was in 2005's Return, uh, Revenge of the Sith, not Return of the Sith. Um, that's a completely different movie. And it sounds like he's actually more excited um to reprise the role um, of Obi-Wan. He said, I'm more excited about doing this one than I was doing the second or third one uh, that we did before. I'm just excited about working with Deborah Cho, um, who has also been directing some of the Mandalorian uh, episodes. And the storylines are going to be really good, I think. I'm just excited to play him again. It's been a long time since I've played him before. He's also expressed that he's very excited to try out the whole volume, which is the special effects uh, technology that they've been using for the Mandalorian. So he's uh, you know, he talked about how, you know, now it, we're going to be able to really create stuff without all the green and the blue screens, he said, which was really kind of tedious as an actor. So now you, you know, he's going to be immersed in it, you know, a lot more. Um, he said that, you know, he knows that, you know, those sequel, pre-sequel movies were in the greatest you know he he realizes that as, as an actor um but he said that you know for who they were really made for which is the kids which is what we've talked about numerous times he said he knows that they're special to to the kids to the ones that you know it was actually made for so he's happy to kind of bring back that magic and even more in this new series. Interesting. And we still don't have any plot details at all about no. what it's going to cover. Mm -mm. Um, the assumption is it's going to be his time on Tatooine, right. which has, has been fairly well covered in, in novels and comics. Um, is this going to be more targeted towards the kids or is this going to be more targeted towards the adults like the Mandalorian? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be kind of, you know, if it's, you know, obviously with the Mandalorian, they they kind of got that sweet point. Right. You know, it it the adults were really excited about it and the kids are really excited about it. You know, we know from from our kid you know, we weren't really sure if she was going to be as into it. And, and she was. Um, and I know various different people who they became very big fans of it, you know, from, from our age group and, and younger and, and whatnot. So with, you know, it, it almost sounds like they're, kind of going to keep it on the same level maybe because Deborah Cho is, is part of it. And that's kind of what I'm hoping. Is right. It, it sort of, it, it keeps that same uh, maturity level mm -hmm. to the characters and the story and the plot. Right. Uh, and it tells us some of that backstory that we didn't get between mm -hmm. Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope about Obi-Wan. And it's like they, they have that formula this is this is how you do it and how you do it right. Let's keep it going. So yes, and and I think if they can continue with that level of success, then the lack of Star Wars movies since mm -hmm. they're trying to take a break from it right. won't hurt the franchise. Um, certainly, the marvelization of Star Wars, where they're trying to crank out multiple movies a year, was not the right formula for this mm -hmm. particular genre. Um, I'm just hoping uh, in the wake of the issues that we revealed uh, last week or the week before about 
uh, Disney having issues with the second season of The Mandalorian, that there isn't some fundamental shift in philosophy of the storylines mm. where we're going to go down that wrong path again. Right. But it's hard to catch that lightning in a bottle again like mm -hmm. you did with Mandalorian because yeah. that first season was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely think, you know, working with the talent that they have now, you've got a tremendous amount of potential. So tell us about who Daisy Ridley's character, Ray might have been the granddaughter of. So, as you mentioned, there's been a number of different articles that have come out because just this last uh, week, she was on Jimmy Kimmel Live with... I did not what? mute that tab, and I thought I did. <laughs> you know? I was like, who else is talking? <laughs> it's just me! What the heck? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this anyway. is a great blooper episode. This really um, is. So anyway, so uh, the other night she appeared alongside Josh Gad um, and they were talking about uh, the movie, obviously. And she had said, you know, at the beginning they were toying with her actually being related to Obi-Wan. And that they kind of, you know, so, you know, they started filming and it was like, okay, you're going to be related to Obi-Wan. Then they kind of took it away. And then they're like, no, you're going to be related to this one. No, we took it away. And she said that while the filming was going on for the movie, it kept changing. So there was, it, it seemed like they had no idea where they really wanted, um, you know, to go with it. And then, of course, it's like, oh, by the way, you're you're related to to Palpatine, and it was like, oh, okay, <laughs> sure, you know. And then, of course, everyone was like, how did that happen? And then, you know, in another article that basically talked about the same thing, with, um, you know, the going back and forth, uh, with who her lineage was. Um, you know, because they kind of hinted even that she was a Skywalker, you know, at one point in time. Um, and, you know, there were fans basically that came out after her revelation uh, about this, that they were just like, you know what, this is why things have been wrong with Star Wars since Kathleen Kennedy has been <laughs> involved. So, you know, Twitter was even all, you know, up in, in arms about uh, the whole thing with who she was actually related to and and could Palpatine have survived, you know, and then um, the actor that, that played Palpatine even talked about um, at a uh, comic con that was held earlier this year saying that, you know, Palpatine was really a clone and you know it wasn't the original palpatine and you know that if you watch the movie and you know the one scene where it kind of pans you see these clones of snoke and that who's a clone and who's not a clone type thing so it kind of just goes what so but it was interesting to hear from her saying you know that she wasn't expecting to to be palpatine's you know granddaughter uh either well, and I have to say this revelation, I don't want to say it makes sense, but it certainly makes some of the questionable choices mm -hmm. in the movie make sense. Uh, the fact that there was that level of indecision all the way through the movie, you feel that in the movie. I mean, right. the movie itself feels like this confused mess of a movie that like changed directions 12 different times. And when you watch that movie through, there's like four movies in there, mm -hmm. but like parts of four movies, I should say. And they stuck it all together and they made an incohesive mess of it. It makes no sense to have her be Palpatine's granddaughter. Right. There was no indication that Palpatine even had any offspring, no indication he had any relationships, nothing. So it was like completely out of the blue. And the fact that he survived is just. It's ridiculous, especially when not only does he survive, but they take you back to the throne room that he's allegedly survived in. Right. It just, it made no sense whatsoever. Like, if you could clone Force users that easily, why didn't the, the Jedi Order just clone 
a whole bunch of Jedi's instead of cloning clone troopers. Right. Or or maybe they didn't have that technology and only the Sith did. Yeah. See, and, and that's the thing. It's just there was. But so he was many... a really bad clone. If that was, <laughs> if that true. was, if that was the best clone you could come up with, he was pretty decrepit. <laughs> true. Just but saying. it was just like it made no sense. They they were, like they were trying to borrow elements from the expanded universe. They were trying to come up with some kind of, like twist, some kind of hook, and then. They revealed the entire hook months before, almost a full year before the movie came out, when they had Ian McDermott show up at Celebration. Right. And you you see the trailer, the the first teaser trailer for mm-hmm. it, and it's got Palpatine. Like, like you know right. what the twist was. And it's right. like, why, what, what was the point of that? Yeah. That would have been like the opening scene of A New Hope, Darth Vader's first line saying, Luke, I'm your father, and then go on with the rest of the movie. That would have been a completely different movie. Right. Like, like that was, that reveal happened when that reveal needed to happen. Right. And that's one thing that J.J. Abrams has done terribly was his reveal. Right. You know, you go back to A Force Awakens and we find out, like, almost in the opening scene that Kylo Ren is is the son of Han and Luke, uh, Han and uh, Leia. And then he takes his mask off, like in the second scene. It's like, wh- why are why are we doing all this stuff out of mm. order? Like those reveals are supposed to be saved to a certain point in time because they're plot relevant. True. You don't put all your cards on the table and then start betting. Mm. It makes no sense, and that's what they did with this. So, make it would have made a lot more sense. It would have made a, for a much more compelling story if Ray was the granddaughter of Obi Wan Kenobi, mm-hmm. because. For the Star Wars fans out there, if you watched Rebels, Obi-Wan already had a relationship in place. He had a relationship in place with this woman from Mandalore. She was the ruler of of Mandalore. And they had, to the point, and it would have set up the the new Obi-Wan show, too. Right, right. Because the relationship he had with this woman was terminated when Darth Maul kills the woman. Oh. So it would have been a fantastic plot twist mm. for a, a antagonist as it would moved have, forward. Everything would have lined up a lot better. Right. If and they then would have done with that. this show coming out, mm-hmm. you could have played up the whole lineage that Obi Wan had from this secret relationship mm-hmm. that he had as a Jedi. Okay. So they they ruined the whole thing though. So. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway. Anyway. One more reason to hate that movie. Because <laughs> I need it more. Never enough reasons. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and I'll see if I can screw up the next segment. Okay. Awesome. Can't wait. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Tell us about Doctor Who and New York Comic Con. So BBC America, in partnership with HBO Max, is excited to announce a new spotlight on Doctor Who and the series return to New York Comic Con with the Doctor herself, Jodie Whittaker, 
and her companion, Yaz, who is played by Mandeep Gill. Uh, together with a moderator, uh, Melanie McFarland, who is a TV critic for Salon.com, they will take a look back at their epic two seasons on the TARDIS, which has been packed with shocking twists and turns and surprise. Um, to catch the panel, it'll be on Thursday, October 8th, starting at 2.45 Eastern Time. Uh, the two stars return to in BBC America's highly anticipated Doctor Who's festive special, uh, Revolution of the Daleks, which will be premiering this holiday season. Um, the uh, New York Comic Con fans will also be able to uh, see um, some interesting things about a new BBC America series called The Watch, and that will actually have a panel on Friday, October 9th, starting at 1.30. And The Watch follows an unlikely group of misfits, the City Watch, who are forced to find the guts to save the world. Um, and they even surprise themselves in the process. And it's a comedic yet thrilling series of, uh, that pits trolls, werewolves and wizards and other heroes against an evil plot to resurrect a great dragon, which would lead to the destruction of life as we know it. So that kind of sounds like, like something, uh, that we would, uh, be watching. Kind of a plot hole there. Why would you want to resurrect that dragon then? Well, what they, benefit do you get from? Well, it? they they want to stop resurrecting. They they they're t they have to stop the dragon. Oh, I thought they were dry. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. No, they have to stop the plot to oh. to do that. Um, now, as we've mentioned before, New York Comic Con this year is doing what San Diego Comic Con did, and everything is virtual. Um, New York Comic Con will be online from October eighth to the 11th and just like with San Diego the majority of the panels are free uh to to view um you know online so. at, at least you know we can attend this New York Comic Con and I know I can get a room with <laughs> air conditioning right <laughs> unlike our last attempt to go to New York Comic Con oh that was so sad that was really sad yeah, yeah. So are yeah. they doing and they're not doing anything uh, live on stage or anything like that. This is all they haven't be... they haven't talked about, you know, anything and they they don't have a full list out yet. I'm sure if you kind of search, you can you can find um, some different things. So it's it's coming out, you know, and I'm guessing most of it kind of like with San Diego has been pre-recorded or will be pre-recorded. Right. I don't know if anything will actually be done. Now, are they live. still ex uh, releasing exclusive merchandise? Cause I know San mm -hmm. Diego did some exclusive. Yeah, they actually have the only thing that I've seen so far have been like t-shirts and stuff. And, and there was one t-shirt that said something about, you know, I miss seeing you at the con. Um, and other things that said New York Comic Con, I'm sure there's probably going to be. Because you know, those are going to be collector's items. Oh, absolutely. Just from the circumstances of which mm -hmm. the convention's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So in a couple of weeks, we'll, you know, we'll be able to enjoy New York Comic Con from, from home in, in air conditioning. So October 8th through 11th. Hopefully we won't need air conditioning here by then. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, so tell us about The Walking Dead. So this has been popping up all over the place. Our, our Amazon, uh, echoes even, uh, mentioned it as well. Um, that Walking Dead will be coming to an end after a supersized 11th season. Um, so it's not ending anytime soon because at this point it'll be in 2022 that the final season will air. Um, so ABC, ha uh, not ABC, AMC has actually already given the go ahead for a new Walking Dead spinoff with fan favorite Norman Reedus and Melissa McBride in their roles as Daryl and Carol. Um, the show is sounds like a new heart episode. <laughs> Daryl and Carol, yeah. <laughs> so the show is actually being created by sh current showrunner Angela uh, Khan and uh, Scott M. Gimble. And they have an unyet titled uh, series, but that looks like it's going to be scheduled to premiere in 2023. Um, so the Walking Dead season 10 finale 
which everybody's been waiting for because of everything that happened with the shutdowns of all of the production. They had finished filming it, but they didn't do any of the post-production things. Uh, That will actually be airing on October 4th. And now we'll have 10 additional episodes, which will be airing in 2021, that will still be part of the 10th season. Um, so really kind of confusing how they're, they're doing all of this and, and breaking it up. Um, and actually what was kind of interesting is they said, you know, that this was kind of very reminiscent of what AMC did with the end of Mad Men and Breaking Bad, where they did an 11th season and kind of broke it up into two years because that's what they'll be doing with The Walking Dead the final season will actually be 24 episodes, which is twice as many as a regular season, and it's going to be broken up into to two years. So got a lot of Walking Dead for a lot longer, um, you know, and the show's been been on since 2010. So it, it's had a very good run. Um, and the other thing, too, is for those that have read the comics know that the comics now are are done. You know, Robert Kirkman finished with 190, uh, 193 um, episodes or uh, uh, issues. issues, and it actually ended last year. So it'll be interesting because obviously, you know, from reading online and, and, and whatnot, there's a lot of people that are still alive in the comics that aren't in in the show and, and vice versa. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of wrap things up and and bring some sort of closure. But obviously, we know that Carol and Daryl live because they're going to be in a, a new series unless well, they do something where they... And that's the interesting thing because Carol doesn't survive the comics and Daryl doesn't and even exist in the comics. Exactly. So... So it's kind of funny that they're going down a, you know, right. a spin-off that way. Right. Right. Uh, but the other interesting thing is the uh, point they're up to in the show here is very close to the last series that they did in the comics. Okay. Um, so it, it kind of makes sense to wrap it up here. Mm-hmm. But the last episode of the comics, it was very weird the way he ended it mm-hmm. because everything's going along. You have this plot, you know, line that that you're going down here and that plot line ends, but it doesn't end with a finality that would end the series. It ends with the whole, OK, let's move into the next. Let's progress to the next mm-hmm. plot line. Right. And the very next issue is a time hop issue that is a flashback of how we got here and what the state of things are now Mm -hmm. so it was almost when i when i read into it it was almost like he didn't want to do the comics anymore and he just decided to end it but he ended it in a way that gave him that large time gap that he could go back to if he needed to and rewrite more of Mm, that stuff and fill in those gaps okay I doubt he's going to do that at this point in time. But maybe somebody else could. Right. If... And I think he did that in a way <clears throat> to give the the writers and producers on the show the ability to sort of write the rest of the story mm. with this line in the sand being the final comic of here's what things need to end up with. Mm-hmm. You guys fill in the blanks. Um. So I don't think. You know, we've got, what, 24 episodes in the final season. We've got a season finale and four episodes. Right. So you're looking at about 29 episodes at this point in time. That's a lot of time. There's a lot of story that can happen in 29 episodes. Mm -hmm. You know, plus you also have, you know, are they going to do any more crossovers because you have Fear the Walking Dead with a couple of characters have crossed over with that. And then you have... The Walking Dead World Beyond, which is yeah. the the young which adult, which hasn't even a premiere yet, right? And that will be premiering um, October eleventh. So, you know, again, with that, is that something with anybody crossing over from the world that we currently know? Yeah. And now you're you're seeing things from you know another angle 
you know, that we haven't seen before. So, yeah. I mean, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that The Walking Dead only, it, it was a, sadly, to compare it to COVID, it was something that afflicted the whole world. Mm-hmm. And you're only seeing this right. very small segment of the world right. from the eyes of these characters. Right. So there's a whole other world out there that mm-hmm. we can explore. Yeah, you you don't even know what's going on in other countries at, yeah. at this point. Yeah, but you know, I I think the 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 zombie trend is kind of playing itself mm. out at this point in time. We went through our vampires and that played itself out, and then right. we went through zombies that played itself out. Right. So eh, it might be might be time to wind it down at this point. Right. But again, we we also have the three movies that are supposed to be coming out with Rick Grimes and, and that whole right. what happened once he got picked up by, you well, know. And that's the other thing, because if you look at it from the comic standpoint, where the group is going now mm-hmm. as of the last episode introduces them to this this other larger world this larger entity Mm -hmm. and that was where in the comics rick grime played a very significant role Mm -hmm. well if he's going to get his movies and they're going to meet them there does everybody meet up later is there a crossover that happens between the movies and stuff yeah or or is he picked up by a completely different group because in the comics the the Commonwealth right. didn't have helicopters and the right. kind of technology that this group had. So I think we may be looking at a different group. Right. This is definitely a different group. So anyway, just speculation at this point mm-hmm. in time. But yep. it should be interesting. We got a lot of Walking Dead to go. And of course, they're going to cancel the show because I started watching it. So, But you've been watching it for a couple of years now. It's not like you I, just well, started. No, I've been watching it. This is maybe my second year because I've been okay. the first seven years. All right. So that's pretty good because there have been lots of other shows that you start watching it while the season is going on and it gets canceled. All right. So, so, so movies about dead people <laughs> apparently have more legs to them when I start watching them than anything else. There you go. We'll be back in a minute with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful picks. That pick. was a quick minute. <laughs> the, just, m- the magic of movie editing. The magic. Um, so my insightful pick this week is a uh, documentary series um, on Netflix called Love on the Spectrum. It is an Australian reality show um, that um, is, I guess it, it's a dating show, really, is what it is. Um, and what they do is they follow seven young adults who are all on the autism spectrum and are trying to get into the dating world. Um, and what's interesting about this is it's much different than your regular you know dating show um it actually seems to have a little bit more heart and is a little bit more real because there there's so many different dating shows uh out there and and you know you end up finding out that you know so much has been set up and that you know this person already knew this person or you know they made sure to to put this person you know with this person so that they'd clash and there's none of that with this you you feel the the genuineness of this um there's actually two couples on here who who are um who have been dating for, for a couple of years and, and, you know, they talk about how they got together and, and how it's been, you know, the challenges they face to, to, to live together and things like that. And then you have a, you know, all of these other, um, young people who, you know, in some cases had never been on a date before. Um, you know, some are just so determined to find somebody to be with and they show that there's these, um, you know, different organizations out there that are geared towards people with disabilities or with autism to, to help them understand how it is, uh, to date and, and just be in social environments and and things like that and it's you know in some cases it's very sweet to see you know the innocence of it all um you know and and where the producers are there you know asking them questions and you can see 
you know, them getting flustered um, with everything because you have to figure they're there. There's all these cameras. There's all these lights and, and, and everything. And, you know, they'll they'll say to them, do you need to take a break? Do you need to? And yeah, I do. Or no, I'm fine. Or, you know, the the one <laughs> date, it was funny. Um, you know, the, these two people are on a date and the one gets up to, to go to the, the restroom and the the producer is like, oh, so how are things going? He goes, I think it's going really well. I don't know. You know, she's really quiet. And all of a sudden you hear her in the background because, you know, they have no filter. Uh, I, I'm totally okay with, you know, she's, she's mouthing off, you know, during something that you would never see in a, a you know, in, in a different type of, of dating show. Um, I believe it's five episodes. And at the end of the, the final episode, it, it gives a little recap of all the different people. You know, there was one girl who, who found someone and they went on two dates and it looked like things were, were going well. And you find out that, you know, they decided to just be friends and, you know, someone else is still, uh, you know, going and working. And then the one person is actually working with a psychiatrist uh, or a psychologist and actually helping to create an app for people with disabilities to help find, you know, others in, in the dating, uh, the dating circle. So really a sweet, you know, much different than, again, all the other dating shows out there. So it's Love on the Spectrum on Netflix. Very good pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is not a documentary. My pick this week is a new show we started to watch. Mm -hmm. We're, I don't know, three, four episodes into it so far. Right. And that is Cobra Kai on Netflix. 30 years after their final confrontation at the 1984 All-Valley Karate Tournament, Johnny Lawrence is at rock bottom as an unemployed handyman haunted by his wasted life. However, when Johnny rescues a bullied kid, Miguel, from bullies, he's inspired to restart the notorious Cobra Kai dojo. However, this revitalization of his life and related misunderstandings find Johnny restarting his old rivalry with Daniel LaRusso, a successful businessman who may be happily married, but is missing an essential balance in life since the death of his mentor, Mr. Miyagi. Meanwhile, even as this antipathy festers, it finds itself reflected in their protégés as Miguel and his comrades are gradually poisoned by Cobra Kai's thuggish philosophy. Meanwhile, with Daniel's daughter, Samantha, finds herself in the middle of this conflict amidst false friends, Johnny's estranged miscreant son, Robbie, finds himself inadvertently coming under Daniel's wing and flourishes in ways worthy of Mr. Miyagi. So we haven't gotten that far into it yet. Nope. We're but, still in the first um, season. The show is campy. <laughs> it is nostalgic. Very. It's funny because uh, it, it makes fun of itself. Uh, it makes fun of the 1980s. You know, we, we find early on the character of Johnny Lawrence is down on his luck. He's getting fired from his jobs. He hates his life and all this other stuff. And he draws inspiration from watching the movie Iron Eagle, which was a great, you know, 1980s, you know, family flick type thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, he, he starts the jo dojo again. And finds out that, you know, things aren't what is easy as he thought they were. He has to get inspections and he has to take care of uh, various business entity things and advertising and everything else. And he, he dug, goes about it from the, the perspective of a 1984 businessman. And, right. Like he never grew up. Right. Right. And, and never left the 80s. Yeah. So... Uh, it, it's so far, I, I enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're half hour episodes, so they're not that long. They're very easy to digest. Uh, the conflict that they are setting up in the <coughs> show itself is, again, it's that 1984 good versus evil with a twist type thing. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I think it's uh, the show itself is just it's it's good fun. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's a flashback to when we were kids, and you know we get all the references. You know, right. kids today wouldn't get a lot of these references. In fact, they they talk about you know, and there's one scene where he he tells uh, his his uh, student. You know, you just need to 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 you know concentrate, put on some gun ro- guns and roses and rock. And the guy's right. like, "What's what's guns and roses?" <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so it's it's really funny when it comes to stuff like that. So Cobra Kai streaming now on Netflix, two seasons. We're only on season one right now, but mm-hmm. second season did drop and is available. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll be back in a minute. So I think that was the gist of what we had today. Did you have any closing thoughts or anything you wanted to throw out? Nope, nothing today. All right. Before we go, I do want to invite folks to check out our long-form articles on Medium at medium.com slash insights into things. Again, please subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, uh, Amazon, and so forth. Our podcasts are published Monday mornings at 8 um, and feel free to reach out to us at comments at insights into things.com. On Twitter at insights underscore things. Uh, you can catch us on Twitch six days a week at <coughs> twitch.tv slash insights into things. On Facebook at facebook.com insights into things podcast. You can get audio versions at podcast.insights into entertainment.com. On YouTube at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Or you can catch links to all those on our website with each episode at www.insightsintothings.com. And I think we're done. We are. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.